first need to thank Abby Welch, who is a uh, colleague of ours. She works with uh, women in aviation. She works on the uh, uh, communication side of things with Kelly Murphy. And um, this actually, this presentation, parts of it come from her presentation uh, back at the Fast 40s. And she's actually uh, the person who put together the program that made it easier for us to search and find the WASP. So I need to thank her for putting this presentation together, letting me use it, and putting together the tools that we need uh, to make this super cool, because it is way cool. And, oh, and although also she's a supermodel, so you know, um, there, this is Abby. And she's also flight training, and today, if weather permitted, she was going to be flying today. Wanted to talk a little bit about the background of what this is. So women in aviation, as many of you know, um, let me just see if I'm, uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of participants waiting, hold on, join. Um, as many of you know, women in aviation is very much in debt, as individually and as a group. We all feel specially indebted to the WASP. We hold them very near and dear to our heart for the sacrifices they make for the, um, paths that they paved for us all. And as you know, for many years, they didn't really get the respect that they deserved, especially when it came to being interred after their passing. Um, Erin Miller had a great project. She got her grandmother, Elaine Harmon, uh, several years ago now to kind of lead the way of being able to have the wasp interred at Arlington Cemetery. So we thought about that time we started talking about, hey, so we have all these wasps that are, you know, we're losing them quickly in a, and sadly, uh, but wouldn't it be great if we could continue to honor the sacrifices they made as, even as they're buried and, and where they lie. So Kelly Murphy and Patty put together a program called hashtag honor the wasp. And they put together some tools in con connection with Texas Women's University and uh, the WASP Museum, I believe, to kind of find all the WASP and uh, put together a tool to locate them and have the, the chapters be able to locate them. That's kind of grown into a creature unto itself. You see here at the top of this page a link wai.crc.com. Kelly, I wonder if in the chat to this Zoom meeting, you could send everybody this link. Then everybody could have it down in the chat. Thank you. So the initial goal was to have chapters all over the country visit the grave sites of 100 WASP and at least and memorialize that visit in some way. We started the hashtag uh, honor the wasp and those pictures went live onto Facebook. And we found even in our first year, we busted through a hundred, even in the first year. Last year was the second year, this year will be our third. So we started with a database that Texas Women's University and I think, oh, hold on, I think I've got somebody trying to get in. Uh, I think Catherine, Dr. Catherine Landek is, is with us and she's kind of one of the um, uh, key partners with us in this and they've put together a really wonderful database on where all the wasps are interred all over the world. I know all over the country, I'm not sure about all over the world, but I know for sure all over the country. And so they, I, in fact, I should go back to this. So. It's a, it's a spreadsheet that looks kind of like this and tells you the class the wasp was in, her, her wasp roster name. And as you know, many of them were very, very young. So they probably married at some point, their name changed. So it, and they're probably buried under a different name. So the um, uh, database even tracks that, talks about their date of birth, where they were born, when they died and where they were interred. So this is, these are pictures from the first two, and uh, many of them, uh, at least from the first one, I think you'll find if you live in or around the Washington DC metro area, 
there are many dozens of them at the Arlington Cemetery. Uh, and if anybody's in Dallas, there's 10 of them in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. But if you use that magic wai.crc link, you will come to a page on the Capital Region Chapters website that essentially takes that database and makes it searchable by location. It's a really, it's a really pretty, pretty sharp way of putting this together. Abby, Abby put together this tool. You could click on a pin, click on the Southwest pin, for example, and that will bring up a screen of Google Map. Oop. Uh, there we go. So I clicked on Southwest and all of the WASP um, memorials came up. Um, and you can click on the uh, on the pins and the pins will come up and show you all of the uh, grave sites in that region. Along the left hand side you'll see are, is a list of each of the WASP and where they're interred. So before I move any further, does anybody have any questions? Okay, then I'm gonna just keep on trucking. So you can click on these buttons and it will zoom down into or the, the pins and it will zoom down to the location this of the cemetery where the gravesite is located it's also mobile friendly so if you happen to be doing this while you're on the road or if you have some time while you're on the road you can jump in on your phone and uh, see which wasp are interred around you and it's really very user friendly. If you prefer to pick up the list of grave sites, you can do it two ways. You can either click here where the red circle is, or you can click down here to see the list of grave sites in your region. Um, I, I live in Dallas and I'm in the North Texas chapter and we have 10 grave sites in our area. So I find it's easier to go to that spreadsheet search by state, and then you can go in kind of by zip code and city and identify where your, um, your WASP targets are. Um, now, some of you are gonna have, you know, one within 100 miles, and that's great. But uh, if you have a lot more than that, or if you have a goal to visit, you know, more than that, then you might wanna look at the list, either in the region, either in the region down here or the whole list here. Whoops. Well, so this wasn't supposed to show up here. Anyhow, so it's, this gives you all the information. You can click down through the column over on the right hand side. This is added to Google Maps. You can you can ask certain ones to be added or deleted and that will help make your search uh, much easier. Got two more coming in. And let's see. So also, what you'll also see is that there, uh, along the bottom, you can click through, when you click on the, the region, you can click through either the master list or by um, various regions. Let's see. So we've done this for a couple of years. We've learned some lessons. We, uh, and, and I'll throw out my tips, but maybe if anybody else has done it out there, you can throw the tips out too. The first thing to do, especially this year, which is particularly nutty, the first thing to do is call the cemetery. You can look online, you can look at their website, but their website may, information may not be updated, especially in the COVID era. So the first thing you wanna do is find out if they're open, when they're open, when you can visit. Um, the second thing you can ask, often in the uh, list of locations in the database, 
the exact location, the, the plot number and the exact location of the grave site is not listed. And that's the part that's going to take the longest to find out, we found in Dallas, is you, if you just show up, they will then go and research the, the WASP and they'll find the location in their in their cemetery and they'll give you a map and they'll highlight the roads to the exact location uh, in their facility which is really important because these places are enormous and really complicated and if you don't get a, a location then you will spend hours and hours looking for the uh, location and at this point, I need to point out somebody who just joined, Carrie Phillips, rode around with me one day. We had a gravesite number, but we had no idea where that gravesite was in this cemetery. And we drove for hours looking for this gravesite. Um, so we got smart. And last year, we dropped virtual pins at each of the gravesites. And so we will feed that information back to the database so that then TWU and Women in Aviation can drop that information into uh, the database and into our tool to help everybody else find them as well. As well as us, because we're gonna go back this year and we'd prefer to have that information where you know, our GPS takes us right to the grave site. And so we don't have to bother the folks in the, in the office. Um, I would uh, prepare your memorial ahead of time. And at, when you call your cemetery, find out if there's anything that they prohibit um, or anything they prefer. You, you're going to want to know that. We put together a little, um, because we have 10, it can get expensive. Uh, we put together some plastic red, white, and blue flowers, and we wrap a ribbon around it and stick a flag in it. And then at the cemeteries, if we're going to a place that's uh, that has soil, we find one of the green, um, there's a, a memorial container that has a spike in it. You can put the flowers in the spike and drive that into the ground and it makes for a very nice, respectful presentation. Um, Michael's at this time and lots of your hobby places deliver. Get out ahead of it. Uh, there are great codes. We got 20% off of, I've already ordered all of the flowers and stuff for our activity this year. And we got 20% off from Michael's and it'll be waiting for me at home uh, because, you know, most of us can't go out to the stores, but the store, most of the stores aren't open. We're hoping the cemeteries are open, but in places like in Washington, DC, Arlington Cemetery is not accessible. So they're trying to figure out what they're going to do uh, for those ladies. Um, one of the things I thought was super cool that our team did in Dallas, um, and I, I don't even know, it, I think it was Carrie and some of our other ladies, Joy and uh, Chrissy, who did some history on each of the WASP. And they did some research and found out about her and her family and her service and what she flew and um, what she did in the military. And um, they brought it with them to the gravesite and read it while we were placing the memorial. And it was especially meaningful. It was really powerful and it made for an experience that quite frankly, I'll never skip again. I'll, I will always do it because it was so personal and it really became about a person uh, and a very important person um, to all of us and, and our, what we're trying to accomplish now. Um, the last tip that I have and I'll open it up to you guys is to take pictures. Um, take pictures and share them online, share them in social media, share them with the hashtag honor the wasp and email them to Kelly Murphy, kmurphy at wai.org. And we will then um, combine them all and share them online uh, under all of our women in aviation. The um, <sighs> And I just, I just read this chat. You guys kill me. You're so sweet. Um, you gave me chills. No, this, this activity gives you chills. Wait till you go. You, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to give you chills. 
Um, so I guess what I would like to do is open it up a little bit to anybody who's done it or anyone who hasn't. Uh, anybody who has any tips or anybody who has any questions. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go back to the, the picture. Cassandra? Um, Molly, I just wanted to say, so we did Arlington National Cemetery with Capital Region Chapter. And even though it's a big place, I'm certain this will happen in other areas of the country on Memorial Day. The place was thriving with people. I mean, maybe not this Memorial Day, but typically for this event. And there was this great unity. Everyone was there for a cause honoring those people who have been lost. We were there specifically for the WASP. But it was just a really great moment. We had the Rolling Thunder here in DC, so they were all over the cemetery. But um, people actually spend the day there doing this. So it, it really was heartwarming. So anybody have any tips for the chapter members or corporate members or WAI members? Kelly, Murphy? Yes, so I would encourage, in the case of Arlington National Cemetery, they actually had an app that we were able to download and that helped us search for the grave sites. Now some more rural cemeteries won't have that, but that may be just one little tip to check to see if your cemetery that you're going to might have an app to help you locate it. Um, the other thing, um, just to kind of underscore what Molly said, you really need to check with the cemetery as to what you're allowed to put on the grave sites. At Arlington National Cemetery, we were not allowed to use flags, so we did have to use kind of the single flower. And thanks to Cassandra, we were in the columbarium where, again, it's a wall of gravestones. So we had to have some great, um, you know, kind of dual purpose, almost adhesive sticks so that we could actually put the flower up on a wall. So you, again, you might want to just check for that. We, we used very strong Velcro. And uh, the tip the tip is to make sure you've matched up the Velcro male and female ahead of time. <laughs> the last thing I will just say in this era of pandemic, um, I would encourage everyone to kind of map this out while we will post all the honorings during Memorial Day. I would like to encourage you, you know, even if you do it next week or during the week or, you know, whatever's allowed in this time, um, please feel free to do that. And, you know, we're kind of looking at this as for this year, not just that weekend because of the social distancing, but if you can get to a cemetery between now and Memorial Day weekend, please do take a picture, send it to me, and we'll kind of roll them all out during Memorial Day weekend. If, if I can just say something for a minute. Hi, Catherine. Hey, thank you for all the work Hi. you've done on this. This is made for a really beautiful way for us all to get involved and show our love and honor for the, for these wonderful women. Yeah, well, I appreciate, you know, it's the people in the WASP archive, Kimberly Johnson and, and her team that, that uh, have been gathering this information for years and then really worked hard to, to get the cemetery. We've got an intern, Charlotte, is on the call here um, that, that uh, is going to work to update the the material, I, I got confirmation from Kimberly that she's got a lot of the information. So she's gonna feed that to Charlotte and I and, and we'll get it all up to date. But I just wanna say to all of you and share with your chapter members how much this means to those of us who knew the WASP so well and those of us who knew Pat, who, who was the big starter of this. You know, the WASP, they were forgotten for decades you know, and they, they fought for the right to have the flag on their coffins and they fought for the right to have any marker on their, on their grave sites as, at all. And, and they fought to get into Arlington in the 90s and then they had to fight again um, more recently. And it just means so much to those who are surviving and it means so much to their families and to those of us who were their friends for so long. What, what you are doing. This is, it is more than symbolic. It is heartfelt. And um, so thank you all. And thank you, Kelly and Molly and the whole team at Women in Aviation for, and then the, the team at the university for, for making this happen. It's just so important. So thank you. So Catherine, it is our honor to do this. It is really a special moment. And one of the things we found at Arlington National Cemetery that probably isn't the case anywhere else, but 
when we were looking for some of the wasp, their husbands were on the front. Mm -hmm. That's where the flag was posted. And the wife who was the wasp was on the back of the marker and there wasn't a flag there. So they had kind of second tier status, but we made up for that. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, initially they weren't admitted on their own grounds. So the, the first wasps that were there were there as the spouses. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not until later that they were able to be there on their own, um, on their own service. So I'm glad you're making that up to them. <laughs> hey, Kelly Murphy, go ahead. So Kate is just too modest. I'm going to give a big shout out to Kate because tomorrow her book, uh, The Women with Silver Wings, is going to be published. And if you please refer to your March-April issue of Aviation for Women, that's the one with Eileen Collins on the cover, the whole story about um, Kate doing the research on the wasp are, is included in that issue. So it's a great um, article to share with your chapter members um, that talks about Kate's book that's actually coming out tomorrow called The Women with Silver Wings. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, well, and I think you guys will find, I, I, I now look forward to going to visit these women. And they've become people, not just names in a book or you know, on a headstone, they've become people. And, you know, I remember on one of them, uh, one of the gravestones, her husband, her fourth husband uh, wrote, Lillian, oh, how we danced. And you just got to wonder, you know, these women didn't just, you know, pave these enormous roads for all of us. They lived these rich, full lives. And, and boy, am I curious about them. And, um, but now I look forward to visiting Lillian and her four husbands who are now buried with her. So it's just really cool. Um, I hope I hope everybody has the same experience. I know that Pat had a very profound um, reaction to the reaction of the program. Uh, people were sending her emails and contacting her directly and thanking her for creating the program because it had such an emotional impact on them individually. Families now go uh, to visit the, the grave sites. It, be, it becomes a history lesson for the families. Um, and yeah, this is, so for those of us who are friends with Pat, this is a nice way to honor her too. So Molly, one of the things I'll never forget from one of our conferences, there was a WASP panel and um, they, they said, we love coming to the Women in Aviation Conference because when we're here, we're heroes and everybody approaches us and they love us. And then we go home and they wanna know when we're gonna do the laundry and when we're gonna do the dishes. So just another way to honor them. So does anybody have any questions? Kelly Murphy. I just have one quick thing to add to kind of pick up on what you said, Molly. I highly encourage you to make this a family event, bring your children. I brought my college age son, Cassandra brought her twin uh, college people and they loved it. You know, they were like, we, they had no idea, but really encourage you to make this a, a family event um, because that just shows to our support, um, young and old of what the loss paved before us and how we can remember. So encourage your chapter members, you know, again, to bring their kids, their husbands, their friends. It can be a nice, really kind of a family event. And Kelly's daughter even does one to the women who were uh, interred at sea. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna quickly go around. Hey, Scott, you sent me an email real specifically. This, was, this program was really interesting to you. Uh, do you have any questions or anything we can do to help? Actually, honestly, my biggest question is, I'm curious, uh, do we have locations on everybody or no? I think pretty close. Is that correct? Kate? Yeah, she says, yeah. We're, we're working on it for sure. And that's part of the reason we brought um, an intern in this, you know, now, and she's going to try to fill those gaps. That's, and she's been doing another research project that was actually working with finding, finding people in that way. So she's going to, that's going to be her project is to try to fill in any gaps. And then she's going to gather those that we've lost in the last year and add those to the mix. So it, the wasps themselves had trouble finding everybody uh, and we're working to do that. Shootsy Reynolds, if any of you knew her, worked really hard um, to get a marker on every grave. 
uh, that, that didn't have any. So we've got some of her materials too. So we're, we're working on it and getting closer for sure. Cool. Yeah, because that was something I thought, I mean, you could almost, you know, have chapters in different regions volunteer and say, okay, well, this wasp is from my state. So maybe my chapter should do a ancestry search if we have difficulty finding her and, you know, something like that I thought we could do. That's actually part of um, what I did for my other project. Um, I was researching um, where I live in Denton County in Texas, um, uh, Confederate soldiers. And part of that wasn't j was, was looking at um, what regiment and what cavalry they were with, but as well as their family ancestry and what kids were afterwards and everything. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna include part of that in this. So once I get started on it, it'll get there. <laughs> Hey, Kristen Long from Cal um, not California, Canada, whole different place. Um, so do you have any questions? Anything we can do to help? No, you know what? It's um, really neat because, um, you know, a lot of Canadians do travel in the U.S. And um, especially after the border opens and once COVID light um you know, is hopefully done. Um, it's really neat to think that when people are down traveling that they could make a specific point to you know pull up the map it's kind of fun like oh hey we're on our journey down here it'd be really cool to um make a stop along the way something um part of their trip and um up in canada we don't quite have the same program like with the wasps um there certainly were a lot of women who did ferry flights during the war you know they were the ones that transported the planes over to europe during the war and such um um, but it's a little bit different up here. And uh, one of our uh, aviation historians, Shirley Render, has a couple books that she's written. And so it's kind of neat to see um, our, the women during the war that were up here in Canada flying planes too. And same thing, you know, when the war was over, they went back to their kitchens and they were not able to have the airline careers that the male um, Air Force men came back to. That's really interesting. I see our our head of communications, our editor in chief, is is copiously scribbling notes. So it sounds like a, a interesting story. Um, Jamie Frederick, come from away. Any questions, ideas, thoughts? Um, no, not really. I mean, I guess if I really did have a question, you mentioned Molly um, about writing down like a lat long to then go into the database. Should we? Yep add that just like send an email to you or something or back to whoever so on the on the wai crc website there is actually a place where you okay. can submit improvements or additional information if you don't want to do that you can with your photos i'm sure just send them to kelly and she'll get them to um the right people to enhance that database okay uh, Jamma, did I pronounce your name right? Jamma. Close, it's J Jamma. Sorry yeah. about that. Oh, it's okay. Any questions or, or thoughts, tips? Um, so I haven't done it yet. I've been meaning to participate the last few years, and every time it seems we have a massive storm system roll through on the day that we plan to get together and do it. Um, so yeah, probably trying to get something going ahead of time and get those pictures and everything. So it, it, you know, I don't know why it never occurred to me. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the day of. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll try to take all of that and roll with it. Um, and now that we have a provisional chapter here in Pensacola, I know that we do have a wasp at the, uh, the Barrancas National Cemetery. So, you know, really excited, really looking forward to getting into it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We, um, in some places that have a lot of them, you know, it takes more than a day or two. So mm -hmm. I know in Dallas, we did it the weekend before one year. And um, now with all this social distancing, <laughs> we might be even social distancing our memorials as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do it when it's convenient to you. And when your cemetery is open, because yeah. in these strange hours, we may see a difference in, in operating hours. Yeah. Jessica, any questions, thoughts, tips? No, I don't think so. Um, I know this is something that Stars of the North wants to do, go around and visit. We have um, a few wasps buried within the state of Minnesota. 
Um, so it's certainly something we're going to get on the calendar and get out to do. Um, actually, the Minnesota 99s reached out to us to try and wanted to do this together as both of our Minnesota chapters to work together on this. So I think that'll be a nice way for us to connect with that group as well. Super cool. Yeah, yeah. super cool. I thought so too. Super cool. Um, Rachel, Lynn Vig. Hey girl, hey. Hold on, I just unmuted you. You're good to, oh, you muted yourself. I don't know how this works, are you kidding me? Any questions? I don't have anything. I'm okay. Figure it all out. Rachel's from the Yankee Ladies chapter, so it's good to see you guys. Molly, um, can I okay. Ask a quick question. Oh, of course. I, I wonder, have we been in touch with the families at all, or is there is there any concerted effort to let the families know what we've been doing, or is that something that TWU maybe can do with their um, newsletter or something like that? I was going to say, Kimberly, um, in the past two years, has done exactly that, Kate. Kind okay. Of so I don't know where you are with your newsletter, but certainly I kind of wanted to have this meeting to talk about the fact that we are continuing, despite the pandemic, with social distancing and a little bit of variety in terms of we can start now. So I'd be pleased to do that. If you want me to send it to you to coordinate with Kimberly, or how would you if like? You, if you'd like, or copy me on it, and because um, Charlotte and I will be working with Kimberly on on sure. updating the database and stuff. I know she's sheltering at home as well, but but um, we'll. We'll work on that. So I, I think that's great. It again, it just means so much to everybody. So thank you. Great. Cool. You know what was super cool is last year when we showed up uh, in da in Dallas Fort Worth area, at least half of the grave sites already had a memorial. So we weren't the only people rolling rolling around and uh, visiting the lost sites. So, um, Michaela, I know you're on audio only. Michaela Lucas and Omaha. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. And then I'm going to move on to Sharon. Sharon, got any questions or, or ideas or thoughts? Um, yeah, this has been a great presentation. Um, I got some good tips. We've done it now for two years. We love it. It's my favorite activity. Uh, Where thing, are you located? Oh, um, we're a Rose City chapter, which is kind of like oh. um, Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, Washington. Cool. And we have the um, uh, Willamette National Cemetery as well as two other sites where our women are uh, interred. Uh, we found with the uh, Columbine uh, columbarium things, if we took wire and rubber bands, we were able to actually uh, attach our um, flowers to the actual stone rather than just lying it at the base. Um, the other thing we found, um, we, uh, we have like a little tag that says, you know, honoring your service and sacrifice. And then we put Rose City Chapter Women in Aviation. Uh, international and we had a family member that found us just through that tag she did a social media search it was a daughter uh, that just happened to find us she came and was just astonished and so um, that was after the first year so last year she drove several hours um, to meet us at the same time that we were going to be there and was telling us about her mom so it was very moving I think you know for her and certainly for us uh, we love that. Uh, we also use Google Drive to store chapter documents on like our um, chapter continuity form. And I think the idea of storing these GPS coordinates, that's wonderful. Um, I had never considered that. What we've done is uh, we have like the maps of the cemetery uh, and then the actual site kind of circled with any little notes. It's, it's all a paper form. Uh, and you know the best gate to enter or you know just tips that we can pass on and then we've scanned those into google drive so every year all we have to do is just print them up update them and away we go carry them with us you know that's it's a great idea to put a little tag with your memorial to say who you are that's a wonderful idea thank you so much for that uh laura in central florida any ideas thoughts questions 
Well, actually, now it gives me something to uh, look into and see if we have any in our area, whether Cape Canaveral or Daytona, and make that an event that our chapter would like to do for Memorial Day. And some, you know, the, the Florida, the Central Florida chapters, there's, you know, Daytona and Orlando and Lakeland and Tampa Bay and Melbourne. I bet in that whole area, there's a whole bunch of wasps uh, buried there. And so if you, the chapters kind of got together and formed an approach there, that might be something fun that everybody could do together. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sarah, Saller, any questions, thoughts? Um, last year we had um, a daughter of a wasp do it, it happened to be the same day as we were doing another event at a location and she was doing a talk on her mom and she brought all of the memorabilia with her. So the uniform, the pins, um, all kinds of memorabilia, like I said. And so it was a really, really amazing presentation. She did it twice that day for this little museum. And so we have that connection, but I don't think as a chapter we've ever done anything official here in Colorado. But with the millions of bases around Colorado Springs and throughout the Colorado um, Rocky Mountain area, I think there's probably more than a few wasps that we could probably go to the grave sites of. So I'm, I'm, I've got ideas now, so thank you. <laughs> cool, cool. And uh, last but not least, Katie Frost uh, up in Oshkosh. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, sorry, I had to jump on the call a few minutes late. I was just on another work meeting. Um, I don't have any questions, but I'm just so, I, like someone said in the chat, I've just got chills listening to all this. So I'm hoping that um, some of us up here in Wisconsin can do some uh, things for this this year and looking forward to it. Super cool. This is, Wisconsin's another place with the three chapters there now, Oshkosh, Madison, and Milwaukee you kind of triangulate a big portion of the state. So I wonder if working together might um, help you guys sort of canvas the area. Mm -hmm. that, would be, yep. that would be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Well, before we sign off, uh, Chrissy or Cassandra or Kelly, any, any other thoughts or ideas that we need to cover that we've missed? Okay, any other questions? All right, well, I've got this whole session recorded and so I will post that, uh, I'll give the, the link to Kelly and we'll post that on YouTube and we'll post the link uh, on Facebook as well. So hopefully we'll, um, we'll blanket the area with wasp memorials come this Memorial Day. Thank you so much, everybody, for being there. Charlotte and Catherine and Kate, I'm so sorry, but um, thank you so much for being here. Um, your work is really meaningful to us and we're really grateful that you're doing so much hard work on this subject. It's really wonderful. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye everybody. Be well. Bye. Be Thank safe. Bye-bye.